Today I want to talk to you about getting discouraged. Getting discouraged when you're getting outbid on rental properties. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. It's the show where I help you. I help you invest in real estate, cash flowing real estate, real estate deals that make sense, right? I help you guys achieve your financial freedom goals, right? Today I'm working with a man all the way from Buenos Aires, Argentina, my man Pablo. And Pablo, I could tell, I could tell in your last email to me, you're getting a little discouraged, okay? You're getting discouraged because me and you, we put in like three or four offers. And dude, I'm giving you videos and I'm telling you what I think you should bid. And without taking uh, a ridiculously long amount of time, uh, you're hitting me back like, yep, let's do it. That sounds good. And me and you were putting in the offers. But you still haven't got your deals accepted yet, right? And I just want to touch base with you on being discouraged in the business, bro. Do not get discouraged. You are doing everything right, brother. You are acting fast because if we're going for competitive deals, we got to act fast. You're paying cash. You're Johnny on the spot, getting the paperwork signed. You're making the offers. You're not trying to lowball them, right? Like, I try to get you guys the best deal. If I tell you you should put in an offer of 40, you come back and say you want to put in an offer of 25, that's fine. You pay me to make the video, give you my advice. I'll put in whatever offer you want, but it's probably not getting accepted. That's not you, Pablo. You're doing everything how you should be doing it, bro. But we still haven't got your offers totally accepted yet. And that's fine. We are on the right track, bro. Here's the deal. We could have offered more on every one of those deals, right? And we probably could have took a couple down. We might still take a couple down, but the fact that we are in bidding wars and battles should make you feel good. You know that I'm trying to get you the property at the right price. You know that there's a big demand for these things, right? You could buy pretty much any property that's ever listed, guys, so long as you just pay way fucking more than everybody else, right? But it, do you want to do that? Do you want to get a deal or do you want to get a deal for the right price, the price that makes you money, right? And if you want to be in this game and you want to make the most money, we got to get the deals for the right prices, prices that make sense for you. And because of that, we're not going to take down every deal. It's a numbers game, right? You're fishing. You have 10 lines in the water versus one line in the water. You're going to do better, right? I want to work with you. I want to commit the time and resources to you, right? to show you a lot of deals and to get a lot of offers out there that you're comfortable with because when we actually do close some of them, we are going to close them in a much more profitable way than if we're just out there overpaying, right? Lots of people can just take your money and have you overpay, right? There's a million turnkey providers, traditional turnkey providers that will let you do that. Not here, though, man. I'm going to fight for you, and I'm going to be in there. We're going to be swinging a lot, missing a lot, but on the ones we hit, they're going to be big profits for you guys right in this one pablo this one's gonna be tough too right there's a lot of people that want this as a matter of fact i think you're gonna need to go five grand over list this one's a solid deal though right and there's more there's gonna be more out there so even if we don't score this one brother we are gonna get you some deals i assure you let's take a look at the numbers right after this hey steve what are you doing oh nothing just saving money on my rental property insurance oh my steve Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's jump into the details on this thing. This, this is a beauty, man, in Lorraine, Ohio. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Lorraine why i cruise through the pictures man recently renovated right looks modern now i understand right we got a white stove black microwave black dishwasher stainless steel fridge right it's a little hodgepodge it's a little mix match but what you have to understand folks is what we're investing in right this is like a c low c possibly high D grade neighborhood, right? It's in Lorraine, okay? 2435 Apple, right? Now, this neighborhood, great for Section 8 tenants, right? We can do cash, but I prefer Section 8, right? This is not the Taj Mahal. 
This is not going to be high-end stuff, right? They're only asking $49.9 for this house. Now, I think we're going to have to go above that. I think we're going to have to pay $55, okay? I believe $55. I think we're going to get into a bidding war. But when you see things like that, I don't want you guys to be freaked out like, ah, it's a hodgepodge. Guys, this is low-income rental investing, right? The tenant base in this market, okay, Section 8 is going to be the ideal tenant, right? We're not renting to people with two bachelor's degrees making $100,000 a year, right? That's just not what you're getting. But this is a solid blue-collar Little town, kind of off the radar, right? People aren't focusing on Lorraine, right? Because it's on the outskirts of the Cleveland market, right on Lake Erie, man. People don't hear about it in the national media, right? There's no such thing as the Lorraine Cavaliers, right? It's the Cleveland Cavaliers. There's no such thing as the Lorraine Indian. It's the Cleveland Indian. Well, actually, there's really no such thing as the Cleveland Indians anymore because all you woke-ass bitches have us calling them the Cleveland Guardians. But, hey. That's probably a topic for another channel, right? We don't really get into the, the whole baseball thing. But you get what I'm saying, right? It's not Lorraine. People think Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland Browns, right? Not Lorraine Browns, right? People don't focus on this uh, little suburb. And it's probably a good, like, 40 minutes away from Cleveland, right? 40-minute drive, right? So it's kind of off the radar. So the prices are held down, which is great for me, great for investors, great for you guys watching the show, of course, right? Because I'm showing you what's going on at this nice little town. It's our little secret kind of, right? So it's a solid earner for us, right? But this, like, this right here, this is this is fine for this neighborhood, right? We don't need to get super special here, okay? Right? Just Just a solid deal, right? It's essentially moving ready, ready to rock with Section 8 tenants. Now, obviously, the listing agent's job is to take pictures to make everything look great, right? Once we actually do more due diligence, get in there with the home inspector, I'm sure we're going to have to put a couple bucks into this thing, but not like in an, like an insane amount, right? We're not like doing a full rental, but like just like this picture, for instance, right? One thing that catches my eye is the ceiling fan, okay? Like, you want to remove stuff like that. You'd rather replace the ceiling fan with a little booby light here, right? The little boob light, right? Because, number one, who doesn't love boobies? Number two, tenants can't hang on the booby light, right? You get the tenants in there, they got the kids. You know, if it, if it swings, if it moves, if it's hanging off the wall, rule of thumb, if you're a Section 8 landlord, you want to remove that kind of stuff, right? Because that's the stuff that gets broke. That's what increases your cost of ownership throughout the year. So that's something we want to get rid of, right? Another thing that catches my attention is the black dishwasher. Not because it's black and it doesn't match this or it doesn't match this. Dishwashers in Section 8 rental properties, guys, it seems great, right? seems like, oh, tenants are going to love that. I've been doing this a long time, so over $200 million for this stuff, have thousands of rentals. The numbers, the analytics, the data, dishwashers do not make you more money as a real estate investor in these types of properties, right? If we're doing something high-end, yeah. If we're doing Airbnb, yeah, we want a dishwasher. Section 8, $40,000, dollars $60,000 houses, no, right? The amount of damage that happens to them, the way the tenants treat them, it doesn't pay off in the long run. You're spending too much money paying my team to go fix plumbing issues, right? So I'd probably recommend we remove that, right? So you remove the fan, remove that. But just little stuff like that, right? Other than that, though, she's ready to rock, man. She's looking good, dude. Everything is, lo is looking pretty nice here. Now, on the next turn, I would probably repaint all the walls a more consistent color, right? We got a bunch of colors here, but, you know, more or less, we are looking pretty darn good in here, right? Everything's looking nice. The big ticket stuff, right? This furnace, it's pretty darn new. Looks almost brand new. The hot water tank, same thing, right? Furnace. So you guys are aware. This right here, it's that $3,000 furnace. They last about 30 years. Looks like we're in the first couple years of life. The hot water tank right next to it, they last about 15 years. They cost about a grand, right? These are big ticket items we don't have to worry about. Ooh, this is another good thing to highlight for you, right? For those of you that don't know, you see this, right? That's a dehumidifier. Okay, this is an unfinished basement in the Cleveland market. We have a high water table, especially close to the lake. And these are 100-year-old properties, right? The walls, they're very porous, moisture. They have a high level of moisture in these basements. These should not be finished, right? Don't think that you're out there saying, hey, let's throw another bedroom in the basement. No, no, no. These 100-year-old houses, guys, you got to keep them unfinished because they're always going to have a high level of moisture. It's not like... Getting flooded, well, we're going to find out if there's evidence of that on the home inspection, but it shouldn't be getting flooded. But it's very common to have high levels of moisture in here. And what you do is you put a dehumidifier in there, pulls that excess moisture out of the air, right? So that's what they have. This is a nice little hint for you. When you're looking at these pictures, you could really, you know, develop 
a, a high level of understanding of what you're getting into just by the clues you see in these photos, right? Nice little deck. I dig it, man. Cool little yard. Got a little garage there. I mean, this is a great, this is a great little property, man. This is a great little earner, right? So as I said, I want you to go above list. I want you to pay 55 k That'll get you a $1,000 a month Section 8 tenant, man. After you run your normal fixed and variable expenses, I think you'll be netting around sixty-three thirty for the year. At fifty-five k, you only got to put down thirteen thousand seven hundred fifty. I got lenders that'll kick in the other forty-one and a quarter for you. That'll project out to a thirty-one percent cash-on-cash return on average. Not gonna be that way every year, but this thing, solid earner. I love, love, love the little city of Lorraine, man. It's been off the radar for quite some time, and I just feel like us investors, man, we are getting in there and we are gobbling it up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.